wanted to add this to my video about the wellness tea. Um, my husband's actually mowing the lawn, so it's a little bit noisy. But I wanted to show you out here in just our beautiful backyard at the moment with the Sakura Japanese cherry blossom all flowering. So pretty. Oh, it's just gorgeous, big, big bunches of these. So lovely. And over here we've got our peach cot, and you can see tiny wee fruit just starting. And then we have the, um, gosh, I've forgotten the name of it. Green Gage Plum Tree. Plum blossoms have nearly all gone. The rain sort of ruined them. But I hope we'll get lots of fruit this year. And then one of my favourite trees. I don't know the botanical name, but I call it the pom pom tree. I think that's what the common name is. It's lovely. And then through there we have some an elderberry and a bay tree. I use these bay leaves in my cooking. And then there's other big flowering camellias. There's my good husband doing the lawns for us. And we've got an apricot tree here. You never get that many, I think I need to prune it again. And we'll just go back up to the house. And here we have, which also needs a bit of trimming, beautiful, oh goodness, what's this one called again? Clematis. I think it's called Fairy. There's another lovely um, Japanese cherry blossom there and some lovely lavenders down there. I won't show you down further because it's all my weeds that I need to take care of. Good morning ladies. I just wanted to share my wellness tea with you. It's a little tea that I take when um, it's spring here in New Zealand and when the weather just um, gets a little bit damp or we have a bit of rain and because I have asthma it just makes it harder to breathe even though we've got air conditioning now and even though I have my um, asthma medications I still find that this tea just helps to open up my airways and in the blend I have um, four different herbs and I'll show you each of them um, later on in the video. So if you want to come along, I'll show you how to make wellness tea. I'm just going to talk a little bit about each herb that I'm using and also just the book that I'm using as one of my references. And then I'll just take you through my method, <clears throat> sorry for my croaky voice, of how I make my wellness tea. <clears throat> and I'm storing it in just a little brown apothecary jar, which I've just um, made a little label for with my Electrotag label maker. to talk a little bit more about the um, herbs that I've chosen for my wellness tea. This is a book that I've had for well over 20 years, um, probably even longer than that actually. I joined the Herb Society when I was in my early 20s and I used to go once a month and they would have a herb of the month and we would talk about the herb and learn all about the different properties, things you could do, use it for, culinary, medicinal, cosmetic, all sorts of things. So I just wanted to uh, look up a little bit more about lungwort. So it also goes by other names, Jerusalem cowslip and Jerusalem sage. So in other countries it might be called something else. Um, I'm actually having another cup of that tea today. So I'm just going to read a little bit more about it. Um, so the herb's common name variously refer to the white spots on its leaves, the change in its flower colour from pink 
to blue or more frequently to its former application in lung diseases. So that's what it's mainly used for. It's, it's for things to do with the lungs. Um, and what else does it say about it? So that's that one there is not a picture. It doesn't have a photo of it in this particular book. Um, it's native to Europe, introduced elsewhere on well-drained calcareous soils and mixed woodland and thickets. And it's propagated by rootstock and its uses a dried flowering plant, astringent, diuretic, emollient, weak expectorant of use in the treatment of diarrhea, hemorrhoids and some, some gastrointestinal problems, also of some benefit in respiratory disorders such as bronchial catarrh. Oh, so there's a little picture, just a drawing of it there. You can see a little bit, but I have got a colour photo that I've added to the video. Another name for Melane is Aaron's Rod. Um, the common name Melane is derived from the Latin mollus, meaning soft after the large ear-like leaves. The herb is also variously known as donkey's ears, bunny's ears and bull's ears. Melane's tall, spire-like flowering stem was once used as a taper, having first been dried and then dipped in tallow. There is evidence that at one time it was one of the supposed magical herbs of the ancients. Um, so you probably, everybody's probably seen this growing on the side of the road. I didn't know until just a couple of years ago um, that it wasn't just a weed, that it had wonderful um, medicinal properties. So since then, um, if I can find it where it's not too close to the edge of the road, I'll gather it and dry it to use. Um, so it says, uses dried or fresh leaves, dried flowers, emollient, weakly sedative, expectorant, principally employed with other remedies in the treatment of respiratory disorders. The leaves have been included in herbal smoking mixtures and used in domestic cosmetic preparations. The flowers provide a pale yellow dye, an attractive horticultural ornamental. Well, I think it probably grows more like a weed in New Zealand. And the last one I'm going to talk about is elderberry, I mean alicampane, so that you can see there what it looks like. It's quite nice to have in the garden. So I've, I've circled these because when um, years ago at another house we had, I had probably my biggest collection of herbs. There was about 50 different varieties then, and now um, I have a lot less than that, but I'd like to build it up again. Uh, it says alicampane, also known as scabwort is still employed in folk medicine as a favourite constituent of cough remedies and has always been popular both as a medicine and condiment. Its use as a flavouring in sweets continued until the 1920s and it was traditionally cultivated in herb gardens. Um, tall, attractive perennial growing up to 2 metres on thick 15 centimetre long taproot and the root is, is what I dig up and use. And I think I'm, I've mentioned before that it's it's quite bitter. Um, what else does it say? It uses the dried rootstock. It's a bactericidal, uh, kind of expectorant tonic, weak. Some I don't know that word. Almost exclusively employed in the treatment of respiratory disorders, especially bronchitis, coughs, and catarrh. Also used to promote appetite as it acts as an aromatic tonic. Once used in the treatment of skin diseases and in veterinary medicine for the same purposes, hence its name, scabwort. The herb is strongly antibacterial, formerly candied and eaten as a sweet meat, and it's used in the flavouring of certain sweets still employed in some wines and liqueurs in Central Europe. So I hope that was interesting to you ladies. Okay, so into this little bowl, I'm just going to measure... Um, spoons of elderberries about three so this spoon is an old-fashioned spoon it's a bit larger than a regular teaspoon most of my cutlery is quite sort of older style and vintage so that's a regular sized teaspoon and this is this spoon but then this one's a little bit deeper and this one's shallower. So this is probably the equivalent of one and a half teaspoons. So that was the elderberries. The next herb that I'm using is lungwort. 
um, which is, supposed, is quite a strong herb and I'm measuring out three of those that same spoon of lungwort. And then I have my melane. <clears throat> and of course you can, um, you'll probably find melane growing in your garden. I'll attach a picture of each of these herbs um, just for identification purposes. And it's always much better if you can um, grow your own herbs. Then you know exactly where they've come from. And also if you're buying herbs online, I definitely recommend that you only ever buy organic. So this is the Alicampane root. I don't know if you can see that in my hand. It's quite chunky. It would probably even be better if it was powdered. And it's very, very potent. One winter my husband was very sick. So I'm only going to put two spoons of this in to there. Now I'll just move the camera and I'll show you. So here I have the melane and the lungwort and the elderberries and the alicampane all here in this little um, bowl and I'm just mixing them all up until they're evenly distributed and then I'm going to pop them into this little jar which I've labelled wellness tea. So normally if I was going to make this for myself in a small teapot, I like these um, sort of older style pottery teapots, especially for my herb teas, so that would make about three cups in there. So if, if I was going to probably fill it about halfway I also like it because it's dark and the light won't get in. I would use probably two round, two of those rounded spoons like that. And I also just wanted to add that I'm not a trained medical herbalist or anything of the sort. And if you're on particular medications for heart problems or anything like that, I de definitely recommend that you check with your doctor before... Um, trying anything like this and the only reason I'm sharing it is just that I find this tea helpful for my lung conditions it's just asthma um, and sees seasonal allergies but I do find it just helps to open up my airways a little bit so I hope that this will be helpful to somebody else I think it's just going to fill the jar perfectly. Don't want to waste any of these precious herbs. Just pop that lid on and then it's going to be there and ready for whenever I need it. So I prepared a pot of the tea earlier and I'm just going to pour it into my Cup with a strainer. Now sometimes I make a very strong almost triple strength mixture of this tea and it has a really dark color. So one thing that you need to know about um, Alicampane if you've never used it before it's very strong and bitter. So I'm just going to take a sip and I'll let you know what I think of it. Yes, that's quite bitter. Maybe not quite as bitter as dandelion, but it's not a pleasant taste. It's not, it's not terrible, but it's not that pleasant. <laughs> 